elementary school. They're starting to play these sports at six, seven years of age. You know, their heads and their neck and shoulder development is not there to be able to withstand these kinds of blows. So, additionally, with the, the ripple effect of uh, kids leaving football, is, um, so again, in New Hampshire, we have uh, football leagues, you know, that are outside of the school. So you can be on a football team, and you'll have different la levels of uh, age groups. So you have like your U8, your U10, 12, 14, 16. They play in a large league. In rural areas, you have these teams, and it provides an opportunity for parents to get their kids to play and be in a sport and active and the team and all that, which is fantastic. Problem though is that if more parents are pulling their kids out of football, you're going to have smaller, littler kids playing in these games. And they're going to be playing against teams from larger cities, okay, where those kids, a 14-year-old, can be 200 pounds. And my, my kid is maybe five feet tall, playing against these kids. We're going to get creep. He's going to get crushed, literally crushed. Also, in, in high school sports, again, you have people leaving. They're not playing varsity football anymore. So if a school is placed in a division based on their, the size of their school, but that, because the school in our area is large or has a large population, so they're being in the same division as other comparably sized schools. We don't have enough kids playing football to field an entire varsity team. So they're pulling kids off of JV who are eighth graders to play in varsity. And they're going south and playing in, against these large schools that have enough kids to play, they can field two full teams. And our kids, they play both offense and defense and getting creamed. So the ripple effect, I think, um, it's good and bad that the, the awareness is coming out. Um, but I think it's just the, the cause of, and the source of the concussions are just going to be transferred to other sports. So the latest statistic, and this is two, out of 2016, is that there's nearly 200, there are 2 million uh, kids, re there's 2 million sports-related concussions every year. Most of these are self-diagnosed. Most of these do not go to an emergency room and they do not seek uh, medical care. So what are they doing? Where do they go? How do they know they have a concussion? We don't, I don't know. But this is an opportunity for optometry to really step up and, and have a say in the matter. It's optometrists that should be the ones that see them on day one. Okay, they're not going to the ER. If they go to the ER, have them go to the ER. The ER tells them, you have a concussion, here's a CAT scan, it doesn't show anything, go home and rest for two weeks. And then what? Or they go to their primary care. Now you have a headache, you got hit, you have a concussion. Right? But most of them don't even do that. We should be the ones that we see, we have a captive audience. I see them every year for their contacts, for their glasses. I can do a baseline eval on them. I'm the eye expert. Come see us. And this is where optometry as a field has to change, has to educate the primary care. We have to educate coaches and teams and nurses to send them to us because we're the ones that see them on day one or should see them on day one because they're not going anywhere else to do it. Um, so the rates of concussions, they are changing. So obviously football has the highest incidence, uh, followed by hockey. I think hockey, for these numbers, uh, I believe these numbers are a little outdated because girls hockey is not represented in there with the Title IX requirements. And at least in New England, uh, we have a very large contingency of girls playing hockey now. So I think we're going to see these numbers change as well. But you can see that there's girls soccer, and soccer in general, because you have boys soccer, which is up there at the top as well. 
So I think we're going to be seeing, again, that transfer of, of injuries coming from football into soccer. But that's the safe sport. And another stat that uh, the numbers are going up. Numbers are going up in the, the number of kids playing soccer. You know, we have three million kids playing soccer. And I, uh, what I don't know on this stat is the age group. I don't know if this is for 16, U16s, and 18s, or high schoolers, I bet, I don't know. Um, now another thing on, on sports, I think we're, another reason why we're seeing, I think, this uptick in the number of concussions is we're seeing kids that are playing more, we're seeing more kids playing more sports.